Hello, this is Professor Nathanson. This is our fourth video on discovery and disclosure. In this video, we're going to talk about two major things. The first is the timing and ordering of discovery. That's under Rule 26D. We're also going to talk about the mandatory conference under Rule 26F, its purposes, and the way it ties together with Rule 16. All right, let's start off with the study questions. As a general matter, when may discovery begin? See Rule 26D1 for a start. All right, let's start down there. Rule 26D1. Normally, a party may not seek discovery from any source before the parties confer under Rule 26. Now, we'll talk about it in a minute, but the Rule 26F conference is a mandatory uh, conference between the parties where they try to hash things out regarding a whole bunch of things, including discovery. And after that, they'll submit a proposed discovery plan to the court. And after that, the court can issue its scheduling order or have a scheduling conference. Okay. And the normal rule is that there's not going to be any discovery at all from any source. And that would include parties. And that would include third-party witnesses. Okay. So no discovery before the parties confer under Rule 26. There's, of course, exceptions to that, just like there are uh, under many of the rules, except in proceedings exempted from initial disclosure under Rule 26A1B. We'll talk about disclosures later or when authorized by the rules, or by stipulation, or by court order. And a court order, of course, that's the court saying what can and can be done. And stipulation, of course, is going to be by the parties. So, um, unsurprisingly, the parties can um, opt out of the main rule, and they can self-order um, the timing. Now, there's something interesting um, in Rule 26D2, which talks about early Rule 34 requests. Okay, early thought Rule 34 requests. Now, Rule 34 we're going to talk about is production. That's going to be production of documents, things, examination of property or places. Okay. Um, we'll talk about that later. Under the rules, you can do an early Rule 34 request even before the Rule 26 conference. Um, you can do it anytime 21 days after the summons a complaint or served on, on a party. And then a request may be delivered to that party by another party. Okay, say to a defendant by another defendant or by a plaintiff and by that party, the defending party to be served to any plaintiff or to any other party that's been served. Okay, now what's interesting about this is the rule uses the word delivered here. And down here, it talks about when that delivery of the request is considered to be served. The request that's delivered early is considered to have been served at the first Rule 26F conference. So why the distinction between delivery and service? Well, delivery just means when you can send uh, the um, request, that Rule 34 request to another party. Um, you can do it early, even before the Rule 26F conference. However, it's not considered to have been officially served until that conference takes place. And the reason for that will become apparent later on. Um, under Rule 34, it says that there's no obligation to uh, respond to a Rule 34 production request until 30 until 30 days after that request has been served. So the distinction between delivery and service ties into how long the recipient of that production request has to respond to the production request, and that's going to be measured 30 days after service, which for an early request is considered not the time of delivery, but rather the time of the Rule 26F conference. Okay. One reason for this rule is to allow people to make their requests early, but they don't have to be responded to until later on, right? Until 30 days after the 26F conference. And that also gives people things to talk about at the Rule 26F conference and maybe hash out some of their differences in ideas regarding discovery. Now, the next thing you want to think about is, is the sequence of discovery. Okay, and again, unless there's a stipulation agreement by the parties or a court order otherwise, okay, for convenience and justice for the parties and witnesses, um, you can use methods of discovery in any sequence. And the fact that one party discovers in one order does not require another party to delay its discovery. Okay, so you can choose the order of discovery that you take. Um, lots of lawyers have different ways of doing things. In fact, even the same lawyer might uh, do discovery in one case differently from um, another case. There's a real helpful uh, little blurb in your case book. Um, where Glannon talks about some of the um, methods that might be used for discovery. 
Um, I, I tend to agree with much of it. Interrogatories are questions uh, that are sent um, in writing from one party to another party. Um, since the questions and answers are drafted by lawyers, it's not a real good way of getting open-ended information, but interrogatories are nonetheless really good to locate and identify evidence and the name um, of witnesses. All right, And then oftentimes lawyers will then follow up with document production requests to get the underlying documents, right? And then armed with that evidence and then use depositions to collect um, information from the various uh, witnesses okay and leaving the key witnesses for last because you want to get everything you can from the kind of ancillary and, and tertiary witnesses and then you know talk to the to the biggies um, at the end and this is not a be-all end-all I mean many lawyers have different ways of doing it things and there's other sorts of really really um, useful things we'll talk about such as as doing um, requests for admissions and uh, expert witnesses and things are called contention interrogatories and we'll talk about that more later when we get into more detail and into the um, discovery devices now you'll see that I've already gone ahead and answered uh, more of these questions particular order we've seen this so now let's move on to the remaining questions which are about rule 26 the rule 26 F conference all right what must be discussed at the rule 26 F conference let's talk about that first what has to be discussed um, at that conference okay and when we look at what has to be discussed then we'll understand what the purpose of the conference is and the timing um, and all of that so here are things that, that have to be discussed the parties must consider the basis of their claims and defenses possibilities for, for settlement or resolution um, arrange for disclosures disclosures are information that must must be given without even being asked okay um, discuss issues for preserving information uh, and a proposed discovery plan okay these are things that that must be discussed and later on they have to come up with a discovery plan again a must not a may state the party's views and proposals on on a whole laundry list of issues right which includes things timing form or requirement of disclosures right subjects on which discovery should be needed um, timing when it should be completed or should it be phases should be limited in some way or focused on particular issues um, plans about electronically stored information okay those would be computer files hard drives things from cell phones backup tapes and the like all right and those can present um, lots of difficult um, challenges for discovery because of the voluminous nature of the information because sometimes information is is preserved in um, formats that are difficult um, to review because the technology in which they were encoded may no longer exist or be easily accessible there may be problems because information is on a computer that's still currently in use and the normal use of that computer will lead to overwriting or changing or even deleting of information so ESI is is um, a challenge a major challenge in, in modern uh, litigation um, here's another one uh, claims about privilege or protection now we've already talked about uh, privilege and uh, work product right um, so you know if there's any special issues regarding that uh, uh, sometimes uh, people um, will come forth with some sort of proposed protective order for dealing with confidential information uh, for the judge to sign off on all right um, any other changes about limitations and discovery and, and any other orders so as you can see this this uh, meeting all right in the conference the goal of the parties is to partially to get them to maybe settle or resolved hash out discovery and disclosure issues come up with this plan right and that plan is going to be sent to the court all right now let's look at the timing of this and how this ties in together with rule 16 all right the rule says that the parties have to try to good faith to agree on the discovery plan and they got to submit a court within 14 days after the conference through written report outlining the plan okay so so it's kind of like this and there's this wonderful little chart in the book okay got to have the 26f conference and then 14 days after that there's got to be the proposed discovery plan and that's submitted to the court and then after that the court will then either have its scheduling conference and its or a scheduling order and as you'll recall we recently talked about rule 16 um, the court may 
um, order one or more pretrial conferences. However, it um, must issue a scheduling order um, that addresses the party's report under Rule 26F. So now that you've read 16 and 26F, you can see how they uh, tie together. So basically, again, after the court, after there's the meet and confer under 26F, and the discovery plan has been submitted under 26F, okay, then the party can have a scheduling conference or scheduling order, and, and in that order, um, it's going to address things like, you know, this all this stuff here kind of parallels the stuff we looked at uh, down here, the um, things that have to be addressed in the discovery plan, right? So the court's going to have to look at timing of, there we go, timing of disclosures, extent of discovery, dealing with electronic stored information or ESI, okay, any agreements the party reached for claims of privilege or protection, right? Um, other stuff, dates for pretrial conferences, appropriate matters, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, the idea here is that you know, there's not going to be passive uh, monitoring of the case. Everybody, um, the lawyers in the 26F conference and the 26F discovery plan, and the court itself in the 16B scheduling conference order, there's going to be active management of the case um, with a very heavy pressure on the, the, the parties as well as the lawyers um, to uh, try to come to agreement on things. You know, you know people who want to go to law school often say, oh, you know, I'm, I, I'm going to go to law school. I'm really good at arguing. People have always told me I'm really good at arguing. That, that's one of the um, most wrong-headed things I've ever heard anybody say. Good lawyers don't argue. Good lawyers communicate, and they persuade, and they educate. So you really want to be a good lawyer and, and, and zealously advocate for your, your client. you got to learn how to communicate and educate, whether that's your client who's being obstinate and unrealistic, whether it's opposing party who you're trying to hash out a discovery plan and you have to negotiate and maybe even compromise, and the court itself, right? So, you know, keep these things in mind because you don't want to be those lawyers who were, you'll, call, you'll recall from the initial video, those lawyers who were kind of spanked by the court because the lawyers couldn't get along, they couldn't figure out the location for a deposition. So the court said, ah, you, you stupid lawyers, go ahead and resolve this by a game of rock, paper, scissors on the courthouse steps. You know, that's just kind of embarrassing. All right, let's see, what else? When must the discovery conference take place? Okay, again, that's rule uh, 26, F, all right? That's gotta be at least 21 days before the scheduling conference, okay, or the scheduling order is due. So again, let's go up here, all right? Here's our meet and confer. That's gotta be within 21 days of scheduling conference and order and then the discovery plan is due within 14 days after the um, meet and confer. So the idea is then the judge should have seven days to look at the discovery plan and then to figure out what um, to do. Let's see what else. Uh, we've already done number six, haven't we? So last, who must appear at the discovery conference? The rule addresses um, that as well. And it tells us right here, the attorneys of record and all unrepresented parties that have appeared in the case are jointly responsible for arranging the conference. And the court may order the parties or attorneys to attend the conference in person. Okay, what's interesting about this is the court can order the parties to attend the conference. So you think, you know, normally um, the conference might be on the phone between the lawyers, but the court can say, no, lawyers got to go to this in person. And if the court decides that it would expedite resolution of the case, the court can also order the parties to go to the conference in person. And of course, you know, negotiation and settlement theory um, strongly suggests that when people are having a dispute that's led to litigation, uh, sometimes one of the best ways to settle a case is to get everybody in the room, see each other face to face, and hear each other out. So oftentimes what seems to be intransible, uh, intran transable, in, in unsolvable um, 
conflict uh, might might uh, be settled if you can just get everybody in the room. So I think it's that's it for this video. It's a short one. Um, certainly just by reading Rule 26, you might not get it. So I hope you found this video to be helpful. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.